Component libraries are a collection of pre-built UI reusable components that you can use in your Blazor application. They provide a consistent look and feel, save you a lot of time and effort, and generally improve the overall quality of your application. So in this video, I wanna go through the best Blazor UI component libraries that are available right now. This video is meant to be an introduction into each of the libraries. It is not an in-depth deep dive into any one in particular. Rather, it's an overview with me just highlighting what I feel is the most notable points and differences between each of the libraries to try and save you some time if you're on the hunt of just wanting to know what's out there or you're looking to start a new project with a new library. These are in no particular order because I didn't want to give the impression that one is better than the other. They are really just different. I'll leave it up to you to make the decision to find which is best for your use case. So our first one is Blazor Bootstrap. And as you can tell from the name, this is built on the CSS framework Bootstrap. It boasts about 60 or so components and has got 3.9 million downloads on NuGet at this stage. It's quite a lightweight library in the sense that it's a single download from NuGet and you get access to all 60 or so of their components. This library is open source and completely free to use no matter what your situation. And is very much an active library in the sense that they're still adding new controls. The PDF viewer was one of the recent ones. Their data grid provides filtering and sorting. It even supports grouping, even though they call it something different here. They call it nested grid. That's something worth noting if you are doing your own research and comparing libraries, make sure you really look for a certain feature that you're looking for because often two libraries will call it something completely different. This is one of the few libraries that I've seen that has a ribbon control. They do have support for charting, but here it's just covering the basics. There's not a particular amount, huge amount of flexibility here. Moving on to Mudblazer. This one is quite a jump up from the previous one based on the amount of content you're given. At this stage, there's about 12.6 million downloads on NuGet and they've got a community of about 5,000 members on their Discord. Mudblazer is very much focused around its material design implementation. So if you like that sort of styling, you're in for a treat here. Mudblazer has an extensive amount of components available to use. In addition to the basic ones, they have a couple of others that aren't seen in some of the other libraries I've got on the list today. Floating action button, they've got a highlighter control that lets you search for items. There's a component for one of these loading placeholders. There is a very cool timeline component that lets you display things in chronological order. A lot of their controls are very flexible and powerful, providing loads of options for things like adding icons and changing colors and placements. Their data good component covers up just about everything you would want it to do from sorting, filtering, editing, and grouping. It even performs aggregates and column resizing, column reordering. A lot of the functionality is available both from server side and on the client side. There's even virtualization options to improve the performance. They've also got a lot of really edge case components like this focus trap component. This really restricts the user from using the tab key in certain input forms. So that user pressing tab will skip over the, the fields that you don't want them to be able to tab into. This is very much a full featured library and you'll be pleased to know that this one is absolutely free. And I quote, while Mudblazer is entirely free to use and always will be, we have a lot of contributors and core team that invest a lot of time into the project. So they're obviously looking for donations, but it is free for all intents and purposes. That brings us to Blazorize, which is another very full featured library with over 80 components that are available to use. One of the standout features for Blazorize that is that is completely independent of any CSS frameworks, unlike the other libraries that we've spoken about so far. So whether you want your site using Bulma or Material Design or Tailwind, this library supports it. In addition to a lot of the basic components, Blazorize has a couple of unique ones, the QR code, generator for example there's a component for playing and streaming video so while blazer is a great library from a flexibility and a customization point of view 
it's not without its problems. I've personally battled with the tree view component, getting it to work in the way that the documentation suggests it's supposed to work. And although I've never used the signature pad, just a quick demo of it here, doesn't seem to work as I would expect a signature pad to work. Blazor Eyes is only free for individuals. So if you're working on a team at an enterprise level where your company makes a million dollars a year, then you need to be purchasing a license. Some of the components are limited if you only have the free version. For example, the charting components are limited to 10 points per chart. Next we have RADS and Blazor components. And this library's got 10 million downloads on NuGet and it has over 90 components available. This library uses a MIT license, so there's no licensing fees associated with this package. What sets RADS in apart is they've actually got a development environment. There's a studio or there is a RADS and Blazor plugin for Visual Studio that you can continue to develop in Visual Studio. This gives you a visual designer to, so that you can drag and drop components. The RADS and Studio has a premium option for different features. You don't have to use Radson Studio in order to use their component library, but I think Radson is hoping you are going to do that. This is quite apparent by the fact that the documentation for each of the components is quite scarce. You'll notice on their documentation page, anytime you wanna find out anything about a component, all you've got to go on is the example source code and an advert for their RADS and Studio. They have a couple of unique components as well. There's a Sparkline chart. There's an arc gauge, which I haven't seen before. There's an SSR viewer. Their data grid provides everything you'd want, filtering, sorting, paging, grouping, and it includes an option to export to XLS or CSV, which I haven't seen in any of the other libraries. Then we have Telerik, and if you've been a developer for any amount of time, you've probably heard of Telerik. Telerik provides quality libraries for all sorts of web frameworks, and their Blazor library is no different. Telerik is very much a paid option and can be quite expensive, but you're certainly getting what you're paying for here. There is a massive amount of components to choose from, especially from a charting point of view. There's a scheduler and Gantt chart option. There is even a spreadsheet component that gives your users an Excel type feel of experience. So there is a massive amount of power available to you here if you and your team has the budget for it. Our next library is Matt Blazer, and this one you don't need a budget for. It's completely free, but because of that, it's pretty lightweight. Nonetheless, it's still pretty popular with 2.2 million downloads on NuGet. This library focuses very much on material design. This library definitely has less components available than some of the other ones on this list. So if you are looking for something much lighter and is easier to get into, maybe you're starting out, just be aware when using this one, if your application starts growing and you need some more complicated functionality, you're going to run into uh, some limitations when it comes to using the tree view. There's no option to uh, check and uncheck items in the tree view, for example, and their data grid, which they call a data table, also only has some limited functionality, things like it's, it's, it's missing things like grouping and server-side paging. And then we have Sync Fusion, which is very impressive, but also very expensive. They've got 2.3 million downloads on NuGet. They have a strong support system, if that's something that's important to you. Sync Fusion has over 85 components available with some very impressive ones. There's even one for creating diagrams. There's a query builder component. There's a pivot table. Probably the greatest thing about Sync Fusion is their exceptional documentation, complete with videos, here you can see what you're paying for. Blazor Strap is another smaller component library, but this one has 1.3 million views on NuGet. This, like Matt Blazor, is a much smaller and easier to use library that really just focuses on the basic components. The big difference with this one is this is built on Bootstrap. This one has quite a decent data grid supporting uh, virtualization. There are code examples uh, showing you how to use it with Entity Framework. So if you want to avoid all the bloat of one of the heavier libraries, this might be the library for you. So once you've chosen your perfect component library, it's still critical that you understand the life cycle of each of those components. So I suggest you watch this video next where I discuss about the Blazor component life cycle and all the events associated with them. Thanks for watching, I'll see you over there.